When the internet was conceived, commerce wasn't even a thought. Uh, in mm-hmm. fact, in fact, consumers in the U.S. could not use the internet legally until 1991, when we passed a Telecommunications Act. And so, the the payments part of the commerce platform was never built into the internet from the beginning, from the get-go. No one thought commerce would take place. On, on. And so what happened is commerce evolved with traditional credit cards, debit cards, and so forth. Now we are seeing the payments platform, the financial services infrastructure being built into the ecosystem. It's called DeFi, Decentralized Finance, uh, thanks to blockchain technology. And uh, we do believe, we're not a Bitcoin maximalist uh, firm at all. I know that Yassine Elmandra, who hails from Morocco, and seemed a little bit maximalist to me. Uh, but uh, we have gotten through that. And uh, now we also have investments in Ether uh, and, uh, and ETH, which is the grayscale um, version of it, in certain of our uh, portfolios that will allow it. Um, and Ether, of course, is, or Ethereum, is the platform upon which most of DeFi is taking place, as well as stable coins and NFTs. So we see Bitcoin as the first truly uh, digital global currency, uh, but it is more than that. It is the first global monetary system. Uh, energy storage, they will be electric. That's going to be uh, uh, the, the most cost-effective uh, form of transportation. And artificial intelligence. These autonomous vehicles will be powered by artificial intelligence. We think this will be uh, a, a seven trillion dollar revenue opportunity in 10 years, uh, wow. which is bigger than the uh, than the energy industry is today, even after this latest price increase. So a uh, huge amount of, uh, uh, of um, potential in that space, which is valued at almost nothing right now. It has been very interesting in the genomic space, which is another area of massive convergence. We think, uh, so uh, we have the five platforms, but there are 14 technologies involved in those five platforms, all of which are moving into exponential growth trajectories. So it's been fascinating to watch our analysts in uh, the genomic space, an expert in uh, DNA sequencing, for example, interact with our artificial intelligence analysts, uh, who's expert in neural networks, uh, which are patterned after the brain. So to watch them uh, interact uh, really does surface some very interesting and exciting aha moments. And my uh, mentor and, and now friend, Art Laffer, who was educated by Robert Mundell, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics for Global Monetary Theory, um, is uh, I, we took him through our first white paper on Bitcoin. This was in 2016, 15, 15. Uh, and we were simply saying, could Bitcoin serve the three roles of money? Means of exchange, store of value, unit of account. The paper's still on our site. And he tore our paper up. He's an economist. He was not going to put his name to anything that didn't uh, meet his standards in terms of monetary theory. And we ended up, I said, uh, just to, to give you a sense of how profound this was in 2015, I said, Art, how big could this become? And he said, and at that time, this was, Bitcoin was $6 billion in market cap. Uh, today, it's, uh, it's probably $700 and 50 billion. And that only has to do with its reserve currency role, which it is. It's the reserve currency of the of the crypto asset ecosystem. Uh, but there are other use cases. And uh, we believe that ultimately everybody, uh, every high net worth individual will take out at least 5% or put 5% of his or her assets in crypto probably Bitcoin getting the lion's share because it is the most secure network. Uh, it is the most secure network bar none. E- Ethereum has been built primarily on GPUs, 
uh, not ASICs like uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, so for DeFi, it's fine for, you know, you put up collateral. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of safety measures on it. Uh, but for network safety, pure and simple, where you want that insurance policy, Bitcoin is probably going to get it. I think that's a, a good opportunity uh, to bring more efficiencies into the, into the uh, ecosystems around the world, but they're going to still be governed by human beings, unlike Bitcoin, right? Uh, that these are going to be tethered to fiat currencies, and therefore the monetary policy of associated with those fiat po policies is going to determine how well these stable coins maintain their purchasing power. Bitcoin is designed with that one purpose in mind, you know, there are no human beings. It's mathematically metered to top out at 21 million units, and we're over 18 million units right now. So its store of value role, I think, is its strongest uh, proposition right now. We are seeing uh, with uh, third-party applications, applications built on top of uh, Bitcoin, uh, that we may see means of exchange and, uh, uh, become more popular, uh, but they're still working the kinks out there. And I do think this is uh, right now very, very new to a lot of people. You have a lot of hedge funds, a lot of traders, uh, yeah. they're, they're chart watchers. So be prepared. If it breaks, uh, if it breaks moving averages, then it's going down lower until they feel that it's gone down. So you have to be prepared for that. And, you know, what we do is we wait, we lie in wait for those opportunities where, when there's a freak out. And that was a freak out, uh, of course. And we bulk up then just know it's going to happen. And that over time, if we're right on how important Bitcoin will become as the crypto world's reserve currency, then, uh, then it will continue to appreciate and its purchasing power will go up, unlike fiat currency. Well, with very few use cases, we can see it at five hundred thousand uh, dollars, and and we get there any of a number of ways. But one of the ways is institutional uh, asset managers are moving in now, and they have to have a point of view because crypto assets are the first new asset class since the 1600s, since equities. And the correlation of relative returns, just take Bitcoin to all other assets, very low. The biggest or the highest correlation is to real estate, 0.34, right, for vis-a-vis -vis Bitcoin. Uh, so institutions, they have to have a point of view on this new asset class. And we do believe just like real estate in the seventies and eighties, and then emerging markets in the eighties and nineties, even though that was not a technically a new asset class, they all got to, they started out with one, 2% positions, moved to five and at 5% of institutions around the world allocated 5%. And let's just say it were towards Bitcoin. That alone, that use case alone would get us to $500,000.